Assalamu alaikum, hello and welcome. In this discussion we are going to be dealing a more, little more about dimensional modeling. Uh, we had an introduction about dimensional modeling in the previous lecture, right? And that was basically chapter 5 of the book. So in this uh, discussion we will be further exploring and further expanding the discussion we already had in the previous lecture and we will be dealing more into the dimensional modeling and how it is implemented right and how the facts tables and dimension tables are organized. In the previous discussion we discussed about how requirements are gathered right and requirements are uh, gathering was discussed previously. So now we can see that after uh, carrying out the first step which is requirements gathering we create a requirements definition document which is a final requirement document. Now the most important part of this requirement document are the information packages that we had discussed in detail. So it is those information packages that are used for converting a data design and once a data design has been produced the final dimensional model can be created. So this is basically a flow from requirements to data design to dimensional modeling. So let's reiterate the importance of information packages. Information packages form the most important part of the requirement definition document. True. Because these are the same things that would be converted into a data model or an schema later on. So as shown in figure 10.1, information packages are used in the data design and finally the dimensional model is created. This is the same thing that I already discussed in this particular figure. Let's now revisit the automaker sales information package that we discussed before, right? Can everyone remember this from my previous lecture? That was basically in chapter 5 that we discussed, right? So those were basically the information package for automaker sales. So as we notice this information package diagram for automaker sales, we notice the three types of data entities, right? Measurements or metrics. And what are the measurements or metrics? These are the facts basically. Annual sale price, maximum sale price, options price, full price, dealer add-ons, dealer credits, etc. Right? We also notice the business dimensions. And what were the business dimensions? Time, product, payment method, customer demographics, and dealer. Right? And these were the categories or attributes of the dimensions, right? So these are the categories higher or attributes. Remember that time had a hierarchical uh, nature that we discussed. So payment method had these attributes, customer demographics had these attributes, dealer has these attributes and so on and so forth. So these were the three things that we have just discussed, right? And Yes, that was a question we've already answered that, right? The, we have identified the business dimensions, attributes for the dimensions, and measurements or attributes. Now, we can look at the fact table for the automaker sales, right? So these were the facts, remember, that we discussed before, actual sale price, maximum rate price, sale price, options, price, full price, dealer, add-ons, etc. So what the fact table would deal with, it, the fact table would contain the, the attribute, these attributes, right, that have been shown over here. And everyone can verify. So these attributes forms the fact table. Now similar to the fact table that we have created the fact table with these attributes, right, we can go on to create the dimension tables for each of the dimensions, right. So I would invite the students to use the same template, same style and try to create the dimension tables for the different dimensions. So as we have already carried out, we can see the dimension tables. One is the product table and product has the attributes model name, model year, 
package styling, product line, product category, exterior color, interior color, and first year, etc. Right? Similarly, we can have the dimension table for time using these attributes. The dimension table for payment method would have these attributes, and so on and so forth. So the uh, the people who are watching can easily verify, right? That these are the following dimension tables that have been created for this particular fact table. Now, after we have created the fact table and the dimension table, then comes the idea of of uh, connecting the fact table with the dimension tables. So any scheme that we use to connect a fact table to a dimension table can be called as a schema. And in fact, when we are designing a schema, we are concerned about mostly the performance attributes, right? The schema should be such that it should, it would allow us to carry out efficient queries in the particular uh, the fact table and the dimension tables. So now we have got these different dimension tables and we have got this particular fact table. So the question arises how we are going to be combining this fact table along with the dimension tables, right? So of course before we decide to arrange it, we'll, uh, the dimension table and the fact tables, we mark the relationships and let's go over what the dimensional model needs to achieve and what its purposes are, right? So how should the dimensional model be? So here are some of the criteria for combining tables into a dimensional model. The model should provide the best data access, of course, right? So because when we are accessing the data, we would be having the joins between the fact table and the different dimension tables. So of course the model should provide the best data access and the whole model must be query centric it should be more focused towards the queries that would be posed by the customers remember we discussed that in a data warehouse the queries are ad hoc on the fly and of course it must be optimized for queries and analysis so for example if we are, one, if, uh, we are trying to do an analysis of basically what a certain salesperson on a certain time, right, using a certain method or a certain age group, right, how the, much the sales were. So this model should uh, provi provide that queries, right. The model must show that the dimension tables interact with the fact table. This is very important, right. So if we want to actually analyze the situation, analyze the fact table and the dimension tables, the schema should be such that it it uh, shows us the, the the relationships clearly between the dimension tables and the fact tables. It should also be structured in a way that every dimension can interact equally with the fact table, right? So at, as it is shown over here, it should be like this fact table should be easily able to be connected with product table time Dim payment dimension, customer demographics, uh, dealer dimensions, okay. The model should allow drilling down or rolling up along the dimension hierarchies. So this is again a very important point. It means that if we are drilling down a dimension, for example, what does it that mean? If we are drilling in the time dimension, we might start with the year, we might, might drill down to a quarter, we might drill down to monthly, we, we might drill down to a particular date, we might drill down to a particular day of peak and so on. The final granularity, right? So this is called drilling down. So the data model, the data dimension model should support this drilling down, which is in this direction. And of course this arrow refers to this particular table. Or rolling up, which would be in this direction. We might hold a query for a certain for a certain day of the month. We might roll up to a day of week. We might roll up to a date. We might roll up to a month. And finally, we might roll up to a full year. So our model should support this. And this dimensional model should make this operation 
very easy and this operation very fast and also we should be able to understand these operations clearly so when we want to combine the fact and dimension tables into a dimensional model one of the very prime schemas that we can have is the star schema and star schema is actually very intuitive and very simple right we have the fact table in the middle and all the dimension tables like product dealer customer demographics remember payment method time so all these dimensional tables are at the spokes of this particular star that is created hence the term star schema so fact table in the middle followed by the each of the dimension tables so some points about the star schema for automaker sales example that we are discussing the sales fact table is in the center around this fact table are the dimension tables of product dealer customer demographics payment method and time and this is an important point each dimension table is related to the fact table in a one to many relationship for example for one row in the product dimension table there are one or more related rows in the fact table <clears throat> now this is a very important point right and we can have an elaboration of this point that basically when we look at this, this is an example schema for order analysis right so the fact table is the order measures which is order in order dollars so that is the total amount of dollars for the order cost margin dollars quantity sold right and the dimension tables are product order date customer and sales person right so let's talk about a particular uh, dimension table which is the product right now one product name can appear more than once in different orders right so again it would appear once over here and in many rows over here so again one to many relationship similarly order date right there might be more than one order in a particular order date right so over here it's going to be a single entry and over here in the order measures we are going to be having different uh, different rows for the same order depending for example if three products are ordered in the same order we'll have three rows for the order as well again one to many relationship customer one customer might have ordered multiple times so this custom one is too many relationship one sales person may have uh, serviced many customers so again one to many relationship so this is basically the idea that was discussed previously in this second point this third point over here so now look let's look at some of the queries that can be done on this particular sample uh, star schema for the order analysis so one of the example star schema sample queries by the marketing department right so for what can be queried for a given amount of dollars what was the product sold right so this query would involve the dollars and the product dimension right who was the customer so order product and customer the customer and product would be involved right in the particular query right which sales person brought the order so over here the sales person would also be involved sales person dimension would also be involved what when was the order placed so which dimension would be involved order date so this is how some of the sample queries that can be performed on this particular scheme again let's look at another query example by the marketing department let us say that the market department wants the quantity sold and order dollars for product big part 1 relating to customers in the state of maine obtained by sales person jane doe during the month of june right any suggestions which uh, dimensions would be involved right this would be the fact table right order dollars right dollars for product big part 
so what dimension would be involved product relating to customer in the state of main which is a place so of course we will be involving uh, related to customers in the state of main so we'll look at the customer and we'll have look at the shipping address Sh shipping address will be involved for the customer now as obtained by salesperson Jane Doe so the salesperson dimension would be involved and of course during the month of June the order date dimension would be involved so this is how basically the sample queries would be processed so we can look at basically the processing of this query more in detail by looking at figure 10.8 so which shows of course this product dimension would be involved with the with the query big part underscore one similarly order date dimension would be involved with the variable month equals june attribute month equals june similarly sales person attributes sales person name would be equal to jane, jane doe similarly customer shipping address right would be the state which would be main again one point is the address might be drilled down right to look at the particular state similarly if we are using shipping address the shipping address can also be drilled down to get to a particular state state city zip remember that's how the address would be broken down into hierarchical form 